Hi everyone, uh, I'm, as Mohit said, I'm Tul Shekhar, so I'll take you through the session today. Yes, right. So what we are actually going to talk about today is Cassandra and Mongo. So let's understand the most popular ones. The most popular ones in the NoSQL world are Cassandra, HBase and Mongo. Okay, so we're talking about three of them, right? So Cassandra naturally is a simple setup, maintenance and uh, code because uh, when it comes to maintenance of Cassandra, the administrator has to do nothing. Most of the things are automatically done. So if you want to scale up or scale down, remove a node or add a new node, and etc., it's very, very fast in the case of Cassandra because it provides you a simple tool which can help you to do that. And you don't have to really worry about resyncing, balancing, distribution of data. All these things are actually automatically done. You want to do it manually, you can always do it. And absolutely provides very, very high velocity of random reads and writes compared to the other NoSQL systems because of the columnar uh, storage capability and its distributed decentralized architecture. Okay. Flexible sparse uh, wide column requirements where you're talking about more on uh, capability to increase your columns uh, for a specific type as and when you need. On a need basis, you can alter your schema. It absolutely have no restriction on that. The only problem, uh, or rather, I would say it's not a problem, but it is only suitable for a case where. Uh, secondary index needs are less, which means you have an absolutely denormalized information, which is all information is sitting associated to serve a specific query is sitting in one single table and not goes across multiple tables to get to serve a specific client query. So assuming uh, basically non-group by kind of models, so people who are very familiar with RDBMS can understand what a group by means. So non-group by kind of uh, systems, Cassandra is absolutely suitable. But if you have an application which has a requirement of group by kind of functionality, Cassandra is probably not a right system to choose. It supports secondary indexes. It doesn't. It, it doesn't mean that it doesn't support. But when you are bringing in secondary indexes, its internal more internal overhead becomes so high that the overall performance of the system comes down. The more secondary indexes you use, the the less the performance. So you can use Cassandra in those cases where you have less Cassandra, less secondary index needs, where you want a very simple setup and maintenance very high velocity of random reads and writes and uh, wide column requirements. All these things were sort of very, very well fitted to time series or uh, uh, data which where consistency is not very, very important. Okay. Uh, an example would be Twitter where we're talking about very, very massive scale and high availability. Uh, a simple thing, uh, imagine the scale of these, right? So if, say for example, come, somebody comes, Angelina comes out and tweets saying that if I if anybody who retweets what I've tweeted, I'll have a date with him. Uh, assume the number of hits that you will get on the Twitter application. And it will be millions and millions of people doing it at the same time. Okay? Uh, so it should be able to handle that kind of a scale. And when it comes to availability, naturally, there are millions of people tweeting on millions of topics at the same time. So it has to be available and make sure that people don't have a bad user experience. Okay, so there is a couple of questions. Uh, is non-group and non no joins? Yes, absolutely no groups, no joining in, in Cassandra. What are all features are to be looked into when checking whether the system is consistent or not? See, it's like this, right? What is consistency? Consistency basically means, uh, see, for you, I mean, the properties that we talked about, right? Uh, the set of properties. So first thing is, say, for example, if a system has to be uh, highly available, which means that uh, if you have multiple clients querying for something, and even in case of a failure, you should still be able to service your requirements, which means you should have multiple replicas within your system. So when you have multiple replicas, uh, the consistency purpose, what you would need is basically all replicas are absolutely in sync every time a write happens. Right, so whenever I'm doing the right operation, okay, I can actually give you an example of Cassandra, and because Cassandra gives you a tunable consistency. So in Cassandra, if you say my, if I set my tunable consistency as the highest, that is, all have to be properly in sync, then every time I do a write, right, if every time I do a write, it writes it to one replica, but the the write does not reply with a come back with a success still all the other replicas which are there in the cluster are absolutely in sync with the data. So that sort of overall your latency of the write automatically increases because 
yes, your data is completely it made consistent behind the scenes before you return a success for your write. So that is what is the consistency concept. So you you can actually obtain your feature, your consistency behind the scenes, basically, which means that every request comes from client application results in the same res result going back. Okay. Okay, let's get to the next one. So where not to use Cassandra? Absolutely no, no, in the case of a lot of group by second indexes, transactional data, relational data, stringent security and authorization needs, never use it. Okay, and dynamic queries. Since uh, Cassandra is basically a qu the query modeling Mac concept where you're talking about, you model your storage subsystem using queries. So first, uh, first of all, when you're doing a modeling, you actually look at all the mostly most commonly used queries then you model your data data then you prepare your beta model based on that one since it's a query based modeling system dynamic queries are very very costly in cassandra sub kind of uh, storage subsystems okay so wherever there is a dynamic query requirement don't use cassandra i mean you can use but you'll you'll get better worse performance probably than the other systems so coming to mongo mongo is sort of an rdbms replacement exactly what i was saying so when you have something which is closer to rdbms kind of requirements uh, for the web applications, uh, Mongo could be an other use. Mongo gives you uh, the additional partition tolerance which RDBMS doesn't give, but it, it has problems with availability which we talked about, but it still can be managed. So it's sort of an RDBMS replacement uh, where uh, if you want to have more relational data and you still want to use a more scalable databases, Mongo probably would be the ideal uh, choice. Uh, it For real-time analytics and high-speed logging, probably it's something which is a suitable system uh, and then it's also scalable naturally because you could actually comfortably add new Mongo nodes very easily and you have uh, replicas etc. Some of the use cases basically would be like uh, uh, Craigslist actually uses uh, uh, MongoDB for storing all the archive posts uh, though the current active posts are still in MySQL but uh, they have migrated about 2 billion plus posts to Mongo. Uh, similarly, Foursquare, uh, where you're talking about venues and check-ins that they have, they have migrated all those stuff from RDBMS to MongoDB. But that's why I said for if uh, a simple replacement, if you want a NoSQL from the RDBMS world as it is, then Mongo would be the right choice. Okay. Where not to use Mongo? Highly transactional applications, applications where you have, uh, I mean. Uh, 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 traditional database requirements like foreign key constraints and etc. because it's a it is still a, a NoSQL system it uh, sort of falls into the category of uh, denormalization so preferably don't use too much of uh, wherever you have too much of foreign key constraints lot of joins and etc. probably it's not a good place but and highly transactional applications okay so this is basically if you look at all three of them now in general if you look at right so if you just compare sort of thing right uh, HBase naturally is distributed and scalable big data store, naturally all of them for some extent, but uh, so comparing wise, strong consistency, HBase, built on top of Hadoop, Hadoop based distributed file systems, uh, so very much use HBase in a situation where you're talking about more of map reduce applications where you have uh, uh, <laughs> more consistency requirements, very strong consistency requirements like Facebook application, like uh, uh, Facebook messengers basically, uh, HBase is the right one. Now coming to Cassandra, incremental scalability, eventually consistent kind of models, more of time series applications like travel portals and wherever you, uh, the questions like uh, feeds, feeds and etc. you would use Cassandra. Now coming to Mongo's, Mongo is basically again a sort of an absolutely uh, it gives you a schema free model, but it's a good replacement for RDBMS. So if you want to replace an RDBMS with an OSQL system, Mongo probably is the ideal choice to start with. Uh, the only problem with uh, Mongo, as I said, is again uh, has issues with uh, uh, ha all these things really work. Uh, so if, if you look at any of the systems, right, there's a lot of practical data on uh, read and write latencies. Uh, so there is a practical experiment which has been done. So if you look at the read and write latencies on these kind of stuff with respect to speeds and etc., Mongo and HBase sort of work well only up to a specific limit of data. Beyond that limit, they sort of degrade in their performance. 
say for example about 32 or 4, 32 or 64 GB of data onwards, Bongo and HBA somewhat come down on the performance wise. Cassandra sort of gives a consistent performance uh, beyond that and even beyond that when the num amount of data increases to petabytes and petabytes of data, Cassandra sort of gives you a very good performance at very very high volumes of data and high read and write uh, uh, indicators. So that's where uh, Facebook actually uses Cassandra. So where there are situations of writing too much of data into the system and uh, very high volume of reads and writes and when the scale goes really high, they use Cassandra for more consistent applications where you're talking about messenger and etc they use uh, HBase and then uh, the other case for Mongo would be more of uh, uh, the uh, movie booking sites or uh, say a replacement of existing RDBMS applications because they sort of fall very close to the mechanism of RDBMS uh, at the base so MongoDB is more suitable. Okay, so let's take a few questions now. How do Cassandra HBase communicate? Is there a standard protocol? Uh, no, there is no standard protocol. All of them are separate storages. They should have uh, a mechanism of export-import mechanisms. So that you could actually do something like that uh, in which they can communicate. Basically, you export data from HBase uh, into some format which is importable into Cassandra. Or Similarly, if there are tools available which provide you Cassandra data in some particular standard format which you could import into HBase. That's the only way. There is no specialized standard protocol for communication between them. Uh, 